Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video we're going to be setting up our damage systems for our hammer being used by the mech character. Now as of right now the character is able to swing their hammer about, but we don't have anything that we can hit and as such we're not going to be able to deal any damage. What we're going to be doing in today's video is setting up a simple test dummy that we can use to take damage from our hammer and get all of our code working from this. This test dummy is also going to act as our master AI as it's going to contain all of the health stuff, all of the damage stuff so we don't have to rewrite it every single time that we add a new AI character. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So the first thing that we need to do is actually create a blueprint, which is going to be for our test dummy. Now the easiest way for me to do this is to actually just duplicate the third person character. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's going to have all of the elements that you need for that. It's going to be a blueprint. It's going to have a character mesh. It's going to have an animation blueprint assigned to it. And you can also add code to it. So grab your third person character under third person BP and blueprints and simply duplicate it. And then for the name of this, we are going to give this Test, we're going to give us the name test underscore dummy underscore master. And then if we open this up, what we can do is start stripping in or stripping out the code for the bits that an AI is not going to need. So this AI is not going to be using any input. So we can delete the default attack. We can also delete um, the weapon as it's not going to need that. And we can also remove the code for things like movement inputs as AI is simply not going to need this. So pretty much all of this, just delete every single bit of code within your blueprint, hit compile and you should be good there. What you also want to do is delete the camera boom and the follow camera as AI do not require the use of a camera. So with this test dummy now, we can drag this into the scene. And if I go ahead and press play, you are going to notice it's just gonna stand there. Now, even though it's running on the spot, that is completely fine. The reason why it's running on the spot and mimicking the movements of our normal player character is because it's using the same animation blueprint, but that is not a problem. What it will do is stay there and I can start using it to write my code for taking damage. If you don't want it to run on the spot for now, the easiest way to solve this is open it up, go to your viewport, select your mesh and just set your anim class to none and then hit compile and what it's going to do then is stand there on the spot and then we can start using this as a test dummy properly. So let's start setting up all of our damage systems with this test dummy now. So the way that it's going to work is we've got a hammer blueprint and when that hammer overlaps with our test dummy we want it to run a little bit of code. This code is going to check to see whether or not they're actually attacking because what you will get an overlap event for is if you run into it and hit, the, hit it with a hammer without actually using the inputs for a normal attack it's going to create an overlap event. What we're going to be doing is checking to see whether or not that input has actually been pressed. So we're going to be doing that check. If they are attacking and it has touched properly we're then going to be telling it to take away some health depending on the type of attack that you've done. Now it's all probably going to start to get a little bit complex as we get into it, but just follow the video nice and slow and you shouldn't really have any problems. What I'm going to do for now is dive into it and just run you through the code as we go along. Open up your test dummy. Within here we need to create a variable for our health so that the engine knows exactly how much health this specific AI has. So create a variable and we're going to give this the name health. And then for your variable type in the details panel in the top right hand corner, we are going to be setting this to a float. And for those of you that don't know what a float is, it's a numerical value with decimal information in there. So we can do 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on and so forth. Go ahead and hit compile and set your default value to 1. 
one is going to be your maximum health that's going to be equal to 100 percent zero is going to be equal to zero percent so essentially 0 0.1 is 10 percent 0 0.2 is 20 percent 0 0.25 is 25 percent and so on and so forth so with this, what we can do now within this dummy, we can start creating this begin overlap event. So what I'm going to do is within my event graph, in a little bit of space that's blank, I'm going to right click and create a begin overlap event. So just right click, type in begin overlap, and you will find a collision event called event actor begin overlap. Zoom in if you haven't done so already. And what this is going to do is you can define the other actor. Now, with this other actor, we only want it to fire off if it has touched the hammer. If it runs into a bush or a tree, you know, we don't want this code to be run, only if it touches the hammer. So the other actor, drag that out and type in cast to hammer. Hammer is the name of the blueprint containing the hammer mesh. Now, if we do this, what we're going to do for now is simply print a string and with the in string we are just going to tell it to print on the string hit. So all we're doing here is essentially printing a string with the name hit if we hit this test dummy and this is how we're going to be able to tell whether or not our damage system is starting to take place. If I run into it you can see at the moment it is currently not printing that string. And the reason for that is because our collision is not set up correctly on our hammer. So what you want to do is go into your mech combat folder, blueprints, and open up your hammer. If we select our hammer mesh in the components panel in the top left and scroll down to the collision tab, you can see the collision preset is set to no collision. So we're never going to get that begin overlap event. So from the drop down, set this to overlap all and generate overlap events. If we hit compile, hit play, and then run up to our character, and you can see whenever I hit it, it is going to say hit. Now, what you will notice is because this is an overlap event, you can see that even if I just walk into it with my hammer, it is also going to register that but we don't want that so we need to run a check to see whether or not the character is actually attacking this test dummy. The way that we're going to do this is if you remember within our third person character we have got a variable called is attacking we're going to be using this so we're going to be getting that variable checking to see whether or not it's true and if it is we are then going to be reducing the health. So let's do that. So go into our test dummy, delete the print string, and what we're going to be doing is after we cast to the hammer, we are going to cast to the third person character so we can actually access the variable for is attacking. Object wildcard should be get player character, and then as third person character, all we're going to be doing is get is attacking. And then with this, if we drag out from is attacking, we need to create a branch node. And if we hook it up to the execution pin from cast to third person character, if is attacking is true, then we want to print a string. If it's not, then we don't want it to do anything. So if we hit compile now, hit play, run up to our test dummy and walk into it with our hammer, you can see it is no longer registering a hit. Whereas if I swing the hammer now, you can see it is going to print that string. But normally it's not going to. So you can see now our damage system is being a little bit more precise. So now it's only going to fire off and run that code when it needs to. So let's show you how you can actually take away health. It's really, really straightforward. So from this print string that we've got here for hit, all I'm going to be doing is simply setting our health. Sorry, we're not, <laughs> don't type it in that way. Get our health variable 
in the bottom left and set this. And what we're going to set this to is simply float minus float. So what we can do is float minus float. So we need to get the original value, whatever that might be, and then we're going to take out or take away a certain amount. So let's say you want it to be two hits to destroy the character, you would set this to 0.5 because 0.5 is 50% of the player's health. If you want it to be three hits, you might want to set it to something like 0.4. This is how you're telling the engine how much health to take away when you hit this AI. Now, we are going to have a whole bunch of different damage types, but we're going to be coding this in as we start to add those into the game. But for now, this is just fine. What we're going to do after this is run a branch check to see whether or not health, or float rather, is less than or equal to zero. So get our health, hook this up into the A, and then for the B, if it's below zero, that means that AI is dead. So if that is the case, all we're going to be doing is simply destroying that actor. So if we go ahead and press play, jump in, and then hit it a couple of times, you are going to notice it will destroy itself. It's disappeared and it has died. So hopefully you guys are starting to see that our damage systems are starting to come along together. But for now guys, that is pretty much everything that I wanted to show you for this video. Thanks again for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.